good deal. Okay. All righty then. So what we'll do is, oh, I don't know why. Okay, good. All right. So let's see. We'll do that. All right, cool. Well, Miss Jackie, it looks like um, it might be just the two of us starting this party. Okay. Yeah, like, like not like we haven't done this before. <laughs> exactly. I like one on one. Yeah, yeah, not like we haven't done this before. Oh, yeah, there yeah. you go. Hey, Sister Lampkin. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so good deal. All right. Good evening, Sister Lampkins. Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you all doing? Hey, Virginia. Hey, Jackie. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Okay. And hey, hey, Keisha. Keisha's watching on Facebook, so we got that too. So, all right. Well, hey, um, let us go ahead and uh, open. Actually, before we open, I do want to do this. Um, I get uh, not. I think I know. It was five years ago tonight. Uh, yeah. that the um, that Dylan Roof walked into Emmanuel AME Church and during Bible study, he uh -huh. killed nine of the members of Mother Emmanuel AME. And um, it was a, a shocking thing because we were having Bible study that night as well and uh, kind of changed some of our impressions of uh, going into the church and uh, having Bible study and being careful and being cautious. And so... Um, it is a significant moment as we look back and think about, you know, uh, well, how far we've come in this country and how far we haven't come in this country uh, in the last five years. Um, but one of the things that I think that we can hold on to and remember, and I truly believe they did not die in vain. And as we're going to talk about tonight, God is still in control. Okay. And um, so uh, God's word is still active. It is still real. None of us have stopped going to Bible study and neither will we. Um, and no matter how hard Satan might try using people to keep us away, we will continue to study the word of God. And so Amen. Um, I did send out an email um, and invite everyone to, uh, we are doing a virtual service on Saturday evening at 6 p.m. Uh, you should have that in your email. If you don't have it, it's also posted on my Facebook page. It's on the St. Mary Facebook page so that you can join us on Zoom as we commemorate not only those who passed, but also those who um, survived uh, because uh, surviving is no easy thing. And I'm sure they're having some emotions and feelings right now as they look back five years ago tonight. So uh, with that, um, let us pray. Eternal God, um, <laughs> Thank you for bringing us to this point in time in history. Lord God, there are so many things going on, but we have carved out this time. We have made time for you. And so, Lord, as we do look back on what happened at Emmanuel AME Church, as we look, continue to look into what we are seeing now on our TVs, as uh, church members are dealing with uh, possible exposures to COVID and we're dealing with just all of this stuff, Lord, help us to say la. Help us to pause and think about you. <clears throat> Help us to see you this evening, Lord God, so that we would be better prepared to face the memories, better prepared to face the mess that is going on around us. Lord God, remind us through this study that you are still in control. Use me as the teacher. Use all of us as students as we uh, speak to one another and we share with each other the word that you have prepared for this evening. Lord, I do not believe anything is an accident. And so what we are about to study, you have prepared for such a time as this. So Lord God, help me to teach. Help us all to learn that we might be better when we finish this study than when we started. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, um, Good evening uh, once again to everybody. We are going to start tonight, and hey, Vicki, uh, let's see. Um, we are going to start tonight in Psalm 47. Yes. yes. Psalm 47, and all nine verses, and we're going to see what we can do with that. <laughs> so we're going to start uh, in fall, Psalm 47. <clears throat> and um, we will, yeah, anybody got any questions or comments about what we've read in the past? Psalm 46, uh, any, any other psalms, <laughs> any other questions? Anyone? Okay. Hey, Mara, can you hear me? 
Yeah. Can you, will you please uh, read Psalm 47? Read the whole thing. Oh, clap. <clears throat> oh, clap your hands, all ye peoples. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is great. He is the great king over all the earth. He will subdue the kings under us and the nations under our feet. He will choose our inheritance for us. The excellence of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all of the earth. Sing praises with understanding. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes, princes of the people have gathered together. And the people of God of Abraham for the shield for the shields of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hey man, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sister Mara. Um, so, all right. So this psalm is a little bit different than the other psalms that we've looked at because it's got a particular focus. Somebody tell me, what's the focus of this psalm? Well, I think it's praising God. 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 Yeah, the, 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 the focus of this psalm is praising God. And uh, yeah. so somebody tell me, what, what, are, what, are, what is uh, the psalmist? We'll just go in general and then we'll break it down specifically. What is the psalmist praising God for? Everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got an everything. His greatness. His greatness, okay. His awesomeness. All right. <laughs> yes, for the Lord. And it says he's a great king over all the earth. Earth. Okay. And he helped us defeat other nations. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it and he put people under our control. Yes. Okay. All right. And he chooses our inheritance. And he chose. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So so okay, so in, in the midst of all of that stuff that you named, which is uh which is really which is really wonderful. Hold on, I, I got too many, well, I don't have too many Bibles open. So, all right, so let's start with those first four verses, okay? And so, who who do the psalmists say need to praise the Lord? All you people. Everybody. Everybody. Yes. Everybody. Yes, so just, 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 just the happy people? All. No, everyone. All everybody. All yeah. people, okay? And in the, Hebrew, people. in the Hebrew, all means? All. All. Uh, all. So, <laughs> So we we're, we're all supposed to be praising God in the midst of uh, what's going on. Um, yeah. Actually, hold on one second. I got to figure out something is. I you know what? I don't know what's going on with Facebook, my people, because it's freezing up on us. So, uh, but we will try to press through. I don't know what's going on. Everything should be fine. Okay. All right, so everybody's supposed to praise God. Everybody's supposed to praise God. Not only praise God, but how does he specifically, specifically tell us to praise God in um, in, in verse one? Shout with your hands. Yeah. Clap your hands. I, got, I got to clap your hands. No, 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 no. Like rejoice. Like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so golf clap. Not, it's not this. That's no baby claps. Not, it's not this. Clap. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's no. cute. Oh. <laughs> some hallelujah claps. Oh, some hallelujah claps. Some hurt yeah. your hand claps. Yeah. Well, one version said applause. And, applause. Ah. and, and again, I, I, and I, 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 you guys have hit the point that I, I wanted to make. You know, there's a lot of reasons why we clap. You mm -hmm. know, and sometimes we do the little pity pat clap mm -hmm. and, and to understand this is not what when we've seen something really good we've been to a show you know yeah. I told you the best worship I ever saw was at a Prince concert and I can mm -hmm. guarantee you nobody at that concert clapped this way right right yeah. right you know you 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 had paid all that money nobody clapped like this 
Mm-mm. When it came down to it, folks was coming from way out here. Yes. And they were bringing it. And you could almost argue that the, uh, the power of our clap is in direct proportion to how uh, impressed we are with what we've seen and what we've experienced. So if I haven't seen much, but if I've experienced some stuff, and so the psalmist comes out with, hey, clap your hands, oh, you people. Why, why should I clap my hands? Clap my hands and shout to who? God. Shout to God. In one of the versions, in oh, one ahead. of the versions I read, it said that uh, you know, this and this psalm, clap your hand is used in a positive way, but you can also use it negatively. But this psalm gives us the positivity of clapping your hand. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and one of the things that should do for some of us, some of us, a psalm like this would actually free us in worship. Yes. I, I think I shared it once before when I, when I first, you know, I, this, this used to be me in worship right here. I was good. I, I'm good. And uh, one day I saw the people raising their hands. I said, like, what are they doing? Why are their hands moving? The only time mm. my hands was to move is when I did this. Mm. And there was no noise. We did this. This was, this was it. <laughs> and, and, and this kind of psalm should free us up to know that it's okay to clap. Yeah. Actually, I don't know if I share with you. When I, well, I think I told y'all, when I was in college, I used to go, you know, I was whatever denomination the pretty girls were going to. So if they were Baptist, then I was Baptist that Sunday. And if they were Presbyterian, I was Presbyterian. And one day I went to this church. I don't even know, I don't even know what kind of church it was. But oh, wow. this woman went in there and she sung one of the most beautiful a cappella um, solos I have ever heard in my life. It was amazing. And I was like, wow. I, I don't even know why I'm here. I, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know where I'm at. But that was amazing. And when she got done, I went like this. And I was going to come from way back here. And as I was doing this, God said, before you do that, look around. <laughs> look around when nobody's doing it. <laughs> they, they was all like, hmm. <laughs> And I was like, but did you uh, hear what I just heard? Yeah. Because what I just heard was a standing ovation, let's get up and run around the church kind of thing. And they were all like, uppity. Oh, you know, there, there were some of us that were like that. Some some of us Methodist folks that were like that. That Absolutely. you should not Absolutely. do that in church. And what I will say then is, and here's where the balance is, because last week we read a verse that said, be still. Yeah. And know that I am God. Uh, and so there is a balance here. Those of us who clap and want to be loud can't look at people who don't and go, mm, you ain't really worshiping God. Just like they can't look at us and go, it don't take all that. Because we <laughs> find both of these in scripture. <laughs> all right. And so, um, and, and sometimes, yes, it does take all that. Linda complains to me, with, you know, Linda, well, Ayana will yell at me because when I'm watching a football game, I might be just a little bit loud. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Ayana will look at me every time and we've been doing this, she's 19 years old we've been doing this for 19 years Exactly. and she can't look at me dad, you don't have to make all that noise mm-hmm. if you haven't figured out I'm going to make that much noise yet you don't know me very well and yeah. when we were in church and if you had that, you know, people look at you I can't, but she's still, yes I am mm-hmm. I am because I'm still that impressed by God and so mm-hmm. On both sides, we should not be ashamed by the emotion that we show, by the joy that we show in God. All right? And remember, who are the shouts to? Let me make sure we get this. Who Shout to who? Shout yeah. to God. Shout to God. We're, we're, we're not shouting for everybody else. We are not yeah. shouting to please those around us. We are not shouting because we're not shouting because Reginald told us to shout. Right. Shout to God. We are shouting because we are trying to tell God something. And it's not, and again, remember, this is not shouting so God can hear us. No. We are not shouting, um, you know, because sometimes some of us, and I, I do it too, and I, I catch myself doing it, that as I pray, I get louder and louder. People are like, you know, God ain't deaf. You ain't got to yell. I, I know. I, I do. Sometimes. Well, it says shout, shout to God and shout at the top of your lungs. I mean, yeah. how else do you shout at the top of your lungs if you exactly. don't be loud? But, no, yeah. you are right. But the point that I'm making is the shout here is not just a shout. It's a shout of joy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is a shout of joy. So, mm-hmm. so again, that, that opportunity to be excited. Again, I'm not, yay. Yeah. Yay, God. <laughs> because if I'm doing yay, God, you know who I'm doing that for? You. I'm doing that for everybody around me. 
Because mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't I don't want to I don't want to make them feel bad. But this mm-hmm. says clap your hands and shout for joy to God. And, and if we were letting ourselves show to God, you know, the last thing that Linda wants is for me to be embarrassed when I'm with her. Mm-hmm. She doesn't want me to act something, you know, I, I pull back. You know, when we're alone, I'm like, oh yeah, I love you. And then we go, mm-hmm. he doesn't want that. And God doesn't want that either. Right. God does not want us to get with him in person and be like, oh, but when I'm in my home by myself, oh, I just, I get my praise on. So what you're saying is, you ashamed of me in public? Mm. Or you ashamed, you know, no public displays of affection? And this is not the U.S. military. God appreciates public displays of affection. And that's what the psalmist is calling us out to right there. Shout to, I like the, the uh, Christian Standard Bible says, shout to God with a jubilant cry. And in verse two, he tells us why. For the Lord most high is He's awesome. Right. Now we awesome. use the word, hey, right. what word do you have? Virginia? I have one version says great, well, one version says awesome, one okay. version says stunning. Mm. All right. <laughs> and so one of the things that we miss out on is because there are times that we take God so we we brought God so low. Mm. And we brought everything else so high. You know, everything's awesome. Oh man, how was that cake? Ooh, that cake was awesome. How was the awesome. movie? Ooh, the movie was awesome. How was this? Oh, that was awesome. That was mm. awesome. And so when we think about God being awesome, oh, he's just as good as the cake. Mm. He's just as good as two Johns. What the two Johns, man? Dinner was awesome. Well, God is all. Awesome. Ah. And so we've got to make sure we have that understanding. The reason why, and, and one of the great things about the psalm is, in the it doesn't say anything about what's going on around the psalmist. No, because the focus is not on the circumstance. The mm-hmm. focus is on God. Yeah. And when our focus is on God, we'll probably be able. We'll probably be able to shout for joy. Because some of us living life, and I was going to do this, so I have my cell phone, and some of us live life like this. And it's because I got, I got what's in front of me so close, I can't see everything else that's around me. Mm-hmm. And we've got, we've got CNN, and we've got all of this stuff. We've got Facebook, and everything's right here. And we, we, because it's so close to us, we can't see around it. It's not near as big as everything else, but... It's all we can see. And because it's all we can see, it's all we focus on. And this psalm is calling us, take a step back. Focus. Take a step back from what, whether it's good or bad, take a step back from it and see God. Last week's song was be still and know that I'm God. Hey, mm-hmm. take a step back and see God. And when you see him, you're going to realize he is the Lord most high. Mm-hmm. That he is awesome. One person said he is awe-inspiring. He is the great king of all the earth. And when I understand, because 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 what what is that what is that reminding us of? He's still in charge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When we yeah. when we watch the news and we see all of this craziness going on, we get caught up in thinking, oh, it's all out of control. I don't know what's going to happen. But when we take a step back and we get to Psalm forty-seven, verse two, we go, oh, he's still in charge. Mm-hmm. And if he's still in charge, then it's it's going to be okay. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be okay. But when we lose focus, when we lose focus on who God is, and later on we'll talk about and where God is, we are going to, yes, we're, we're running around losing our minds because we forgot that he's still God. Yeah. All right? And so not only is he the king of the earth, but verse 3, and uh, uh, Sister Virginia shared this with us, he subdues people under us and nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. It's all about what he does. Mm-hmm. You know, because the, the psalmist could have said, they could have said, we won the battle. Mm-hmm. That, it's not even about what we did. Right. It's right. about what God has done for us. us. And maybe we would praise more if we would focus on God and not just what's happened in our world or what's going on with us. Yeah. That is the challenge for each one of us as we go through life. Can we focus on it? And then what, What? Uh, verse four, anybody got a word after, uh, between verse four and five? Selah. Selah. And what, what do we say Selah means? Pause. 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 Take a moment think about that. think about it. Yeah. Take a moment and think about it. Thank you, Vicki. Uh, take a moment and think about it. So take a moment and think about verses one through four, that we should be celebrating him. 
He is worthy of our praise. Why? Because he is awesome. He is awe-inspiring. He is the great king. Not just any king. We got plenty of kings on the earth, but he is the great king. Yeah. He is the great king of all the earth. Not just of Shreveport. Not just of St. Mary. Mm. Not just of 4731 Old Brownlee Road. But he is the great king of all the earth. And because he's nation the great king of the all nation. the earth. What do you say? Nation, not the nation. All the nations. Yeah. All the nations. And so we, we, we get that. And so when we can take that step back and focus, we can celebrate who he is and what yeah. he's done. Okay? All right? And it starts with who we, real praise starts with who he is. Okay? All right. Anybody, questions or comments on Psalm 47, verses 1 through 4? Pastor? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, when I'm looking at this, uh, when you start off at one, uh, these these are um, these are more like commandments, commanding you to clap your hands mm -hmm. uh, because uh, what, what what they're doing is they're, they're talking about the uh, uh, the uh, all the attributes of God mm -hmm. and, and and how awesome He is. But then they're they're making a big distinction when you start looking at the uh, Lord Most High because those are all capitalized. So mm -hmm. we're talking about God. And, and 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 besides that, um, when we're talking about uh, when we get down to four about uh, uh, choosing our inheritance for us, that's having confidence that we know that God is going to provide us. Um, you know, uh, 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 we're confident. We don't have to try to do things ourselves. But what mm -hmm. we're doing is we're letting God. Uh, we know that God's going to be able to choose. He's going to choose right, and what He chooses for us is going to be what. What better than what we could choose for ourselves? Yeah, mm. and then uh, it, uh, just to push in four because we're still on four uh, in four, correct? Or, or am I? Yeah, oh. yeah, one through four. You're, you're not, yeah, you don't have to pull back yet. So, so uh, besides with that inheritance, uh, the the pride of Jacob, you know, and, 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 and who he loved. Uh, so uh, um, the pride of Jacob. Um, the land, land. So, so we're oh, just. Me, hmm? <laughs> no, it's coming. Don't worry about. It. Go, oh. ahead, go ahead, brother. So, so, so you know, so we can just kind of see all of this, you know, and, and so I don't, you know, get too far into that. But I just kind of wanted to hit that, you know, uh, about the uh, uh, about letting God work and us trusting in uh, in in Him and having enough faith in Him to know that uh, when He uh, He's going to choose everything that's good for us. And we mm -hmm. don't have to try to do it ourselves. Okay. And, and of course, what the pride was. All right. Good deal. So one, uh, one version of four also, well, he said it, but he said he, he chose the land for us. And he chose the wonderful land for Jacob. So he's kind of, mm -hmm. you know, putting us in the same boat. Absolutely. And, and, the, and the beautiful thing is, again, here, here, let me ask you this question. Do you want what you want, or do you want what God wants for you? <laughs> what God wants what God for you. Wants. Well, hold on. No, no, don't, don't tell me that just because, you know, we, oh, we, on, no, now, no, we no, on Facebook, no. and we on that. Don't, don't tell me what I want to hear. Don't tell me what the right answer is. Tell me what you really want. I think that's depending <laughs> on how you really want. Want. Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. <laughs> you like that, Jackie? I know you like I, that, yeah. I want, I really, really want. <laughs> well, you I know, want, we all are sinners, want, and, want. you know, we want what we want, but, you, you know. You exactly, know. and so, because here, here, here's the issue. When we talk about this inheritance thing, um, yeah. and for those who just joined, we are in Psalm 47, verses 1 through 4. Um, you know, if God, God chooses, and, and mm -hmm. we have a... We really have a choice. We can choose what God has for us yeah. yes. and what we want. Yes. And we make that choice by how we live. There you mm -hmm. go. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, when we say I, things ain't going right, I'm not getting God's best. But what did you choose? What did you choose? You chose to do things your own way. Abraham, God said you'll have a child. Yes. He had a plan. He had a yeah. promise for you, but you wanted to do it your way. Yeah. And you got Ishmael. Uh -huh. And you got all the struggles. <clears throat> yep. And throughout scripture, we see this going over and over again. As God says, I've got the Saul, I've got something for you, man. It's going to be great. Yeah. 
but you know what? I think I want to do it this way. Yeah. And, and he chose. He said, I, I, I hear what God's best is, but I have a pretty good idea myself. Uh-huh. And when we think our idea is somewhere, I think it still says, uh, my ways are higher, higher than your ways. It also says, I is not seen. Neither is ear heard, neither is entered into the mind of man what God has prepared for those who love him. And so what he's saying is, hey, trust me, what I've got for you, it's worth waiting for. What I've got for you, if you will just do what I tell you to do, I have picked out your inheritance. Uh huh. Uh, you know, hey, mom, you'll appreciate this one. I mean, we used to play bingo a lot when I was a kid. We go to base and play bingo. And for whatever reason, I would win a lot. And I would go and I would, and now I can look back and I see my mama rolling her eyes when I would win because she knew I was going to go up there and pick the jankiest thing they had. We wouldn't even get out of the place and that thing was broken. <laughs> and she would try to tell me, no, I, I know what I'm doing. Mm. <laughs> and so I had a choice between what someone smarter than me knew and what I wanted. And I kept picking what I wanted. And it would be okay if I stopped doing that when it was my mom playing bingo. But every once in a while, God will say, oh, Bob, I got something for you. I say, oh, that sounds good. But let me tell you what I got for me. Uh-huh. And I'm running out there doing all this foolishness. And God just like, I thought you would have learned by now. Yeah. I've chosen your inheritance. And when I've chosen your inheritance, I've chosen something really, really good for you. Uh All right. And so that is the challenge for each one of us as we go through all of this. Can we really hold on to what believe who God is? Because that's what is. I mean, all of this is about faith. Do I believe God really is awesome? Do I really believe he's a great king? Do I really believe what he's got for me is better than what I've got for me? Uh And that is the challenge of faith. Okay. any other questions? Psalm 47, one through four. All right. Um, let's see. So, ver- uh, let's see who I got out there. Sean. Sean, read Psalm 47, 5 through 9. Actually, no, actually, just read 5, 6, and 7. Okay. God has ascended a mean, a shout of joy, and Lord, a mean, the sound of the trumpet, saying the praises to God and saying the praises saying the praises to our king, saying the praises, for the God is the king of all of the earth, saying to him as a psalm of praise. Mm -hmm. All right, so so it says, so what does it mean to ascend? (coughs) To go up. To go up, okay, and God God goes up when? Praises go, go up. Yeah, blessings come down. It, it, you know what? That's funny. That's what we say. We always say, oh, when, when praises go up, blessings come down. Woo! That's right up there with Blessed Highly Favored, by the way. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bust the bubble. <laughs> Don't, oh, I, oh, I'm sorry. I'm busting bubbles. My bad. Jackie, I you know, Jackie, Jackie oh. you know we know that. You know we know that. Okay, so, so, so but look, look, look what it says. When praises go up, who else shows up? God. Does. God. Mm-hmm. God. God. You know, uh, you, you got this 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 idea that says, you know, and and, and, and you know, when praises go up, blessings come down. Okay, yeah. fine. You know, I'm still trying to figure out where that is in scripture. I think it it, it got to be in there somewhere. I, I don't know. But what mm-hmm. this says is, when our praises go up, God comes up too. And a lot of times we trying to call God up with our whining. God, I need you to show up. It's so bad. But this verse says when praises go up, he comes up. So how would our prayer life look different? Even though I got an issue. And again, issues are having issues in this world, you will have trouble. But what about in the midst of our issue? We didn't talk so much about our issue, but we talked more about God. Because if you go back to the prayers that like Jehoshaphat prayed in First Chronicles and some of these other guys prayed when they said, aren't you the God who said? 
Yeah. Aren't you the God who does? Aren't you the God who spoke and it was? The, yes, I have a problem. They, they, they talked about the problem this much. God, we got a problem. But aren't you the God who? And aren't you the God that said? And aren't you the God that does? Mm -hmm. Their prayer was about their problem and about their God. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm about, I'm about to get convicted. And then about our problem. Mm -hmm. It's so bad. God, and that's the last time we talk about him. This is so bad. And you see what the people are doing and how they treating me. And my big toe hurt. And I da and I da. And then we like, okay, God, show up. And he like. <laughs> but what, what if? What, what what if we just turned it around? Mm -hmm. And said, God, you know what? My big toe does hurt. And and, and and you know what? People are talking about me. And and my money ain't quite right. Mm. But aren't you the God? Yeah. Who said, by your stripes, I am healed. Yeah, yeah. But aren't you the God that said yeah, you yeah, would yeah. supply all of my needs according to my riches and glory? Yeah. But aren't you the God that said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper? Mm -hmm. What if we all of a sudden prayed about the awesome God that we served? I think he might show up. And I think that because that's what the word says. Because if he doesn't, then the word's a lie. But if we look back again through all, a lot of those prayers in scripture, he showed up in the way that they prayed. Mm -hmm. And that is a challenge for us to really, again, this Psalm is all about the greatness of God. It's not about not having problems. It's about the great, because God is good. All the time. All the time. All the time, God is good. So if he's good all the time, then we should have reason to praise him Oh, all, the time. All, the time. all the time. All the time. And not just when good stuff is happening. True. That's right. That's right. And again, this is this is a different face stance. Be transformed by the renewing. We got to think differently about this thing. Yeah. He is calling us to a different way to pray and praise God. This is when, you know, when we look at, well, does it say praise God for everything or in everything? It, either way, it says praise God. Uh -huh. There you go. Yeah. Right. It, it, it says praise God. And one thing I didn't even mention uh, in one in the King James version of Psalm 47, and Brother Wade, you're supposed to give this to me because you're my King James expert. But <laughs> it says, "Clap your hands, shout to God with shouts of victory, shouts of triumph." We shouting to God because we've already won. Uh. We don't look good. We way behind. Time is running out. But my shouts to God are not shouts of, "Oh Lord, what we's gonna do." Uh -huh. My shouts are, God, we're going to win. How are you going to win? I'm going to win because he's awesome. I'm not going to win because I'm able. I'm not going to win because I'm so good. I'm not going to win because I preach such a great sermon. I'm going to win because he's awesome. And, uh -huh. and so I want to challenge us as we pray that we spend more time talking to God about God. Because one thing that'll do, and, and just like I did, because I got all excited, you know, thinking about the things that I got going on in my world. But when I start talking about how great God is, all of a sudden, my attitude changed because now my, my, my focus, my, my description of myself was not based off of what's wrong with me, uh. but my description was based off of what's right with me. Mm, yeah. And what's right with me is the presence of God in my life. The uh. power of God in front of me, who God is being with me, that is the joy. And that's where joy comes from. Yeah. All right. So, so he says, hey, hey, praise him with the sound of trumpets. And then over and over again, I love this verse. Sing praise to God, to our king. I sing praise to God. Sing praise. Sing praise to our king. Sing praise. Anybody? But how do, what's he saying there? Keep on praising. Don't ever stop. Praise at all times. Uh huh. And and and, who, and singing praise to who? To God. Sing praise uh, to God. Yeah. So again, I you know I I, I just want to make sure because this is not about trying to impress anybody else. No. This 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 is not about trying to make somebody else feel better. This is about recognizing God for who He is, with mm -hmm. all that we are. Um, let me see. I think I I, I looked that up. Let's see. Um, where is it? Uh, verse seven. No wait. Oh yeah, there it is. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 word, uh, the word for praise there is the word to make music. You know, uh, sometimes we joke about, hey, not everybody has a song, but everybody should. Not every, not everybody can sing, but everybody should have a song. And, and we should all have a song of praise to celebrate. Again, it's not just about what's happening in my life. It's about who God is. And he is still God. And he's still good, all right? And so over and over, sing to our king. What's it mean when someone is a king? How, how do we think about kings? Ruler. Royalty. Yeah, ruler. Ruler. See, I like I, I like that one. Your know, royalty is nice, but ruler, because when they're the king, that means they are in charge. Yeah. They are in charge. That means what they say goes. So when I sing praises to my king, what I'm saying is that you are in charge. I think somewhere it still says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yeah. The, the kingdom of God. That means yeah. and and his righteousness. Uh, his righteousness. Yes, yes. The rule and the righteousness of God. That's what we're supposed mm -hmm. to be singing, seeking. And the psalmist here are telling us to sing about that rule and that righteousness. All right. Mm -hmm. And also um, sing praise to God, sing praise. So the, again, and in verse seven, in the in the Christian standard, it says, sing a song of wisdom, for God is the king of the whole earth. Somebody else has a different verse seven. Mom, what does your verse seven say? But God is the king of all the earth. Sing oh. praises with understanding. Ooh, I, yep. I like that. I like that. Sing praise. So, so what's that mean? What's that mean, Mom? Come on, what's that mean? Sing praises with understanding. Make sure you understand. You know what you're saying. Don't be just saying nothing. Yeah. Speak his word back to him. You can sing his word in song. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Understand what you got to understand what you're saying. Don't just be calling words. Yeah. Sometimes we do. And because that it's just repetition to us because we learned it over the years and we don't even have a clue as to what it means because we haven't tried to find out what it means. Yeah, you know. Uh, a skillful song, I believe, is when you when skillful. It's really you're saying back to him the things that he's done for you. That's what I, I believe it is. Thank you, God, for for healing me. Thank you, God, for, you know, you're calling out things to him that he's done in your life. Although he knows everything that he's done, mm -hmm. but I think you're saying it back to him. Okay. But that's now, why he says sing with understanding. You got to have yeah. understanding about what you're singing and what you're thinking about. You don't well, understand. If you, well, you got your understanding because you're telling him. That's, thank you, God, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> understanding. That's you understand what God has done. So this is how you're praising me. Yeah, so, so Sister Battles, I want to take you a step further than that. That we get to the point where I'm not just praising him for what he's done, but for who he is. That's true. That's true. While That's my true. back is hurting. Yeah. Yeah. I still he, praise him. He is still a healer. Even yeah. though my back ain't healed yet, yeah. he's still a healer. Even yeah. though my refrigerator ain't full yet, yeah. he's, he's still a provider. Yeah. 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 Even though people are still attacking me. He's still a defender and a protector. Yeah. And so, yeah. so the challenge for us is the, not to just stop at, oh, what God has done for, us, for me. Because sometimes we don't feel like he's done anything. Yeah. But when we get past that and say, you know what? Even though, what, what, what did uh, Habakkuk said? Even though there are no cattle in the stalls, mm. even though the vine has no grapes on it, <laughs> even though things ain't going right, I'm still going to praise you. You're going to yeah. praise you. Yes. That is a level that I really believe. I mean, come on now. Again, timing in the midst of COVID. Yes. In the midst of economic downturn. Yes. In, in the midst of racial strife and all of this foolishness going on around us. We end up at a song that isn't about anything but God. Praise God. Yes. Yeah. Is he still good? Yeah. yeah. Is he still good? Good despite today. what the racists are doing. Is yeah. he still good but despite what might happen with COVID? Is he yeah. still good when I lost my job because of all that's going on? Is he? Because if he is, then I should praise him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I should clap my hands in victory. I should yeah. sing a song of praise to him. Not just about what I, what is happening right now, but about who he is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I believe this is a promise. God shows up. Mm. Yeah. When we talk about who he is. Yeah. 
And, and so I, I'm looking forward to changing the way, heck, even re really changing the way that I pray. Uh -huh. God, I just wish more people would show up. I wish somebody would do this. God, uh -huh. you said you'd reap the harvest. Uh -huh. I, I'm just turning this all back on you. And you do what you do, and I'll do what I do, and I'll watch some great happen. Yeah. Because uh -huh. our focus yeah. is no longer on us and what we have to do, but it's all about God and what he's going to do and what he is. That's right. That's yeah. right. Uh -huh. All right. So uh -huh. um, let's see. Um, Vicki. Yes, sir. Can you read verses eight and nine? Yes, sir. God reigneth over the uh, heaven. God sitted upon the uh, throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are uh, gathered together, even the people of God of Abraham, for the shield of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. All right. So where, where does it say God is? He's seated. He's seated on he's his on holy throne. throne. Mm -hmm. he, he, he's on the throne. Mm -hmm. And when you're on the throne, what's that mean? You in charge. The most high. Most, so, yeah. You're the king. Please, please, please remember, as we watch all of this crazy stuff going on on TV. God's in control. He's still on the throne. Yes. And I think we talked about it in an earlier song. You don't want him to have to stand up. That's right. Oh, and we, we talked about it in an earlier song. Yes. You know, I remember when my dad was sitting there yeah. and we were acting a nut. And all of a sudden he'd stand up. You'd be like, oh, shoot. Yeah. Something's about to happen and it ain't going to be good. Uh, but we, yeah. we, we, we need to keep doing what we're supposed to do so God will just stay on the throne because he's going to stand up in a minute. Uh huh. He's going to stand up in a minute. And when he stands up, there'll be some people who are not going to be very happy. Yes. All right. And so, again, where is our faith? Our faith has got to be that God is still ruling. He is still reigning. He is still in charge. Yeah. All right? And not only does he reign over the church, what does it say he reigns over? The nation. Mm. The earth. He reigns, he reigns over, over the earth. He reigns over the nation. Earth. All mm -hmm. these people think they in charge. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, everything. But he, thank you, Vicky, rules over everything. And again, that should help us. It, it should give us, I mean, he told us he thinks that we might have peace. We would have calmness in the midst of struggle. Because even though these people are doing all of this stuff, he is still in charge. And if he's in charge, that means he's got a plan. That means they're not doing anything. He did not wake up one morning and go, where did that virus come from? Uh -huh. He did not wake up one morning and go, what are they doing? They're killing people. What? Uh -huh. If he allowed it, he's got a plan for it. Yes. And in the midst, because one of the things what one, some of us are trying to do, and uh, it's, it's a natural thing, it's a human thing, as we try to make sense of what's going on. But one of my challenges, most of us is, how do you make sense of stuff that don't make no sense? Right. That's how we end up driving ourselves crazy. Uh -huh. Because you're trying to make sense of stuff that don't make no sense. But if we would step back and go, God, you see everything and you know what's going on. It's mm. not my job to figure it out. It's my job to serve you in the midst of what's happening. Mm -hmm. Because it's not up to us to figure it out. I, I would love people to say, oh, Pastor, you got a, you got a great word. I, uh, I don't know what's going on. But I do know we need to trust God. That's my word for the moment. We need to trust God because he's still in control. Well, what about, I, I, I don't know. I can't make any sense of it because they don't make no sense to me. Huh. All right. And so that, that, that remembering that he is still on the throne and because he's on the throne, verse nine tells us the nobles of the people have assembled with the people of God. That means the people of the world have joined the people of God. And what are they going to do? They're all going to bow to him. This sounds familiar. We've seen this in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Every, every knee shall bow. bow, and every tongue shall confess that God is, that God is Lord. Is Lord. 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 That Jesus is Lord. They, they, they yes. will confess. And so, we, even if they ain't doing it now, they think they're running things right now. Uh. But uh. we know 
And because we know, again, there should be a sense of calmness. There should be a sense of peace in the midst of the struggle that says, hey, yeah, they think they know. But we know. You think you're running things right now. But he's going to stand up one day. And so as long as we keep ourselves close to him and not worried about, I got to fix everybody. No, we need to tell everybody. What I had to do is tell my brother, hey, y'all, hey, hey, man, you need to be quiet because we don't want dad to stand up. That, now, mm -hmm. when he didn't be quiet, that was on him. Mm -hmm. My job was just to tell him. And I told him out of love. Plus, I also knew if he was going to get it, I was going to get it. So I'm, I, was, I told him out of self-protection as well. <laughs> and sometimes he didn't listen. And sometimes the world isn't going to listen. They're not listening. But you know what? We still tell them, but we don't lose our confidence in the God that we serve. Okay? All right. Psalm 47. Questions, comments? Pastor, uh, when I was looking at this, and, and I like it, and it brought to, brought to my mind, uh, uh, God inhabits the praises of his people. And when we're looking at that, then we're talking about, uh, 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 we're looking at, once again, the attributes of about being victorious, mm -hmm. about, uh, about God being victorious. And, and, and uh, uh, because you're not going to celebrate a loser. You, you know, you're going to celebrate a winner. And they're celebrating, but once again, we go back to their commandments, sing praises to God. You know, that's a, that's, that's a commandment. But then we're also, uh, when we also, we have to go back to five, which uh, 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 and we want to give, as you were saying, give it our best and give it our all. Well, we're giving our best and giving our all is with the sound of a trumpet. Now, the trumpet was what the loudest and clearest of the uh, instruments uh, between what uh, eighty and one hundred and fifteen or so, one hundred and ten decibels. So that was clearly the best, uh, as we should give God our best. And the, and that was the best instrument to to praise God. Mm -hmm. I started, you know, started looking at all this, and, and and God is you know worthy to be praised. So it's one of those things of where you you know you wrap it all up and neatly is God is worthy to be praised, and, and it's commandment what we should do, and also in all this it, it's giving him his just due, and it comes back to how do we make sense and how we do things out of things that don't make sense. Comes back mm -hmm. to one word, faith. Absolutely, amen, amen. All right. Anybody else? Psalm forty-seven. I'm so excited. We're gonna start a second psalm in one night. I'm so excited, and I didn't even rush. Um, uh, Karen. <laughs> can you please read Psalm forty-eight for me, or for us? The whole thing. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The Lord is great and is highly praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain rising splendidly is the joy of the whole earth. Mount Zion on the slopes of the north is the city of the great king. God is known as a stronghold in his citadel. Look, the kings assemble they advanced together. They look and froze with fear. They fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. Agony like that of a woman in labor. As you wreck the ships of Tarshish, Tarshish. Tarshish. Tarshish with the east wind. Just as we heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God will establish it forever. God, within your temple, we contemplate your faithful love. Your name, God, like your praise, reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with justice. Mount Zion is glad. The towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgment. Go around Zion and circle it, count its towers, Notice ramparts, ramparts, tour its citadels so that you can tell a future generation, this God, our God, forever and ever, he will lead us eternally. Amen. Thank you very much, Karen. All right. So we start with this psalm 
and we start in a very similar place than what we just finished. We start, the focus of this psalm is what? Or whom? The greatness of God. The greatness, the greatness of God. Of the Lord. The greatness of God, all right? And so we get that. He is great. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. So now it talks about in the city of God. What's the city of God? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Thank you, ma'am. It is Jerusalem. And why would you say it's Jerusalem? You taught me that last week, Pastor Payne. <laughs> <laughs> Learning has happened. We are done here this evening. Thank you very much. Have a great night. <laughs> do, I get a, do, I, do I get an ice cream cone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You got a gold star ice and an ice cone. cream cone. That's good. Uh, that's funny. So Jerusalem is the city of God because that's where the temple was. That's where the presence of God dwelt. Okay. Anybody yeah. know? Here, here's the next quiz question. What does the name Jerusalem mean? Part of it means peace. Yes, ma'am. It is the city of peace. Which is pretty hilarious when you look at the world today. Yes. Yeah. And what's going on in Jerusalem. But we'll talk about we'll talk about that as we go through this psalm. And so in the city of a God, in his holy mountain, in, in, in his beautiful, in its loftiness, the joy of the whole earth, like the utmost heights of the north, or Zaphon in some of your uh, versions, is Mount Zion, the city of the great king. So we talked about it. Jerusalem is the city of God because God's presence is there. Where is God's presence today? In us. In us. In us. And us. And so when we look at this, as he talks about the city of God and the greatness of the city, the city is not great just because it's a great city. The city is great because of the presence of God. Oh. So we are we are not great because we, uh, you know, we got degrees on our walls. We got money in the bank. Uh, we got nice cars outside. We got houses and land. We are great because of God. God. Us. God. And, God. And, and not just God around us. Holy Spirit. God, God in us. In us. Yes. Because if it was just about God around us, then everybody would be great. Right. But it's, it's God the, in us. It was God in the city that yes. made the city great. And it is God in us. Greater is he that is yeah. in me. Not he, he that is around, in the world. He that in me that is in the world. All right. Yeah. And so, again, when we look at that symbolism of the city, yes, in a very real sense, we are the city of God. We are that place of Mount Zion. We are that where the temple of God is because we are now the temple of yes. God. All yeah. right. And so uh, let's see. Let's read it from this version. It says God is known in the Christian Standard Bible. Verse three, God is known as a stronghold in its citadels. We talked about this last night in Psalm 46. Verse one, God is a refuge and strength. He is a helper who is, uh, who is always found in times of trouble. He is a stronghold within the walls of his city. So not only is he a fortress for us, oh, he is a oh fortress no. in us. Oh. Oh no. he, he, he is there to oh fortify no. us, to give us the strength that we need to carry on in yeah, yeah, yeah. the world. Any oh. of you, oh gosh, dad, I, we, we, some of y'all know, which movie was it um, where uh, Clint Eastwood, he, he had on the poncho, and underneath the poncho, he oh, had the, on... The, the bag, the dirty. The the bag, bag. Bag. Hang them high. Hang them high? Yeah. No, no, it's, I think... It's the ugly, the bad, and the, the ugly. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Ugly, yeah. Okay. So, 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 so the good, bad, and the ugly. So we'll good, go with bad, that one. So he had, hang high. Yeah. He had on the... Um, <laughs> Okay. He had on the, the, the poncho, uh -huh. but underneath the poncho was something stronger than that. Oh, he had that metal sheet plate. He had that metal plate. Yeah. God is saying, I am your metal plate. Hell shield, yeah. I am that thing that protects you. Uh. The world only sees what they see, but oh. what they don't recognize is I'm on the inside. Uh -huh. And, and, and actually, it's not just that the world doesn't recognize it. We, we don't know. recognize it. <laughs> hey, if you remember the movie, in the midst of the movie, he stood out there in front of the dude because he knew he could take it. Mm -hmm. Many of us, we've got the covering and we're running away. Because you please notice, his back was not covered. Mm. Yeah. 
And if you go to the, the, the armor of God, the armor of God covers your head. You got a belt. You got a breastplate. Yes. You got shoes. You yeah. have nothing for your back. Which tells me that when we are supposed to be facing the enemy. Yes. And not facing him in our own strength, but facing him in the armor that we have been given. Yes. And Amen. So, New Good Testament. Time. Put armor of God. Old Testament says God is a stronghold within the citadel. I am the citadel. You are the citadel. And in me is all the protection I need. Mm-hmm. But they talking about me, but I'm protected by God. But they throwing darts at me, but I'm protected by God. That dude shot Eastwood, what, five, six times. He got shot, but no, ooh, no weapon formed. Mm-hmm. And God saying, I will do that for you. Wow. Again, okay. greater is he that is in me. In me. So anything that he that is in the world throws at me, he's got to deal with he who is in me. And this is why we can walk and live without fear and beyond fear, because I'm not walking by myself. Right. All right. There was a point of life that, yes, I'm, I'm scared. I, I don't know what to do. But you know what? Right. I had my mom to reach up and hold her hand. And all of a sudden, even though the circumstances had not changed, all that changed was the fact that I recognized the presence of the one that I was with. Hmm. And as we look at everything that's going on around us, we need to recognize the presence of the one that we are with. Mm-hmm. He is Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. God. It's a beautiful God thing. With us. So not only do we have God Almighty who is around us, mm-hmm. but we have the Son of God who is with mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. But not only that, but we have the Spirit of God who is in, in, in us. us. We yeah. are surrounded. We are completely, come on now. There's got to be a sense of confidence as we go out in the world. Go on, sing that song, Pastor Dan. I, I <laughs> Oh, you made me think about it. Say, I got God the Father above me, and I got Jesus Christ beside me. <laughs> see, see, you, you got, you got the, 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 don't get you, you gonna get me all hemmed up. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't I mean, that. I mean, you on fire tonight. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, so let, let's, let's, uh, um, hey, Brother Smith. Will yeah. you please, will you please read for me uh, verses four through seven? I like this. I like this. <laughs> I like you got two going. Got two two chapters. <laughs> I wait two things. Yes. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah, ready. Oh, okay. For wait. Yeah. For behold, the king's assembly. They passed by together. They saw it, and so they marveled. They were troubled. They hastened away. Fear took hold of them there, and pain, and for a woman in birth pain. And when you break the ship of Taurus, is that right? Uh, Tarshish. With an east wind. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, by in the city of our God. God will establish it forever. All right, great. Stop right there. All right. So I love this. I love this. Because we saw this in First Chronicles chapter 20, but the psalmist is writing about it here. He says, the kings have joined forces. You ever had a case where it felt like everybody was ganging up on you? That, that, that they were coming at you, and it seemed like this, from every angle, people were coming out, and, and the psalmist says, the kings joined forces, and they came at us together. Mm-hmm. But they stopped, and they ran away. Why did they run away? Because we, we were so big and strong? Why did they run away? God with us. No, say it again, Sean. God is with us. Ah, it's it's not about us. It's about the one who's with us. Somewhere, I, 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 I'm pretty sure it says something about a thousand 
you know, will flee when you come and 10,000, you know, all of that. It's not just about you. It's about the God who is with you and the God that is in you. And so, yes, they're going to attack. Please be real clear. They're going to attack, but they're not going to win. Mm -hmm. they, 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 it, it is impossible for them to win. I mean, we look at Jesus as much as he got attacked. We look at Paul, who as much as he got attacked. David spent most of his life getting attacked. But I'm pretty sure they all won. So if God was good to all of them and they were all broke, well, except for Jesus, but David was broken. Paul was broken. Moses was broken. And God was with them. Why would he be with us? I'm just wondering. And, and, and it's the power of God that uh, ruling and reigning in our lives that will push people back. I like the fact it did not say, hey, the kings joined forces, they advanced together, and we pulled out our swords, and we pulled out our weapons, and we beat them back. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with them and their own strength. It had everything to do with the power of God, and that's where they placed their faith. And uh, Brother Smith read verse 8. So as we go through all of this great stuff that happened in 4 through 7, he says, as we have heard, so have we seen. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Romans chapter 10, how shall they hear? Unless there's a preacher. Because faith comes by hearing. hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God. And when they have the word of God, they can walk by faith. He says, as we heard, now we've seen. As we hear what God can do, as we hear of the power and the greatness of God, now we can walk in that and we can see it worked out. Mm -hmm. And so the excitement is, as we continue to come to Bible study and, and do our own personal devotions and we study the word of God, we should be seeing God work and move, not because we're so good, but because his word will not return to him. And if we don't have any of his word in us, can't say nothing. You can't say nothing. If you don't have it, you can't speak it. I ain't seeing nothing from God. God ain't doing nothing. <laughs> Have you heard? Right. Have you heard? Because you're only seeing what you're hearing. And, yeah. make, and you know what that really is? That is the same principle as you reap. What, what you, you sow. sow. Yeah. If I am sowing the word and the power of God in me, mm -hmm. I'm going to reap the power and the word of God around me. Uh -huh. But if I'm sowing... CNN and Facebook and Twitter, and Snapchat, foolishness. Is there no wonder that in the fields around my life, uh. all I'm seeing is foolishness? Uh, uh, uh. Ah, just a guess, just a thought. What you got, brother Wade? I see, I see it. I see you pondering greatness. <laughs> Such oh. depth. Put on your scuba gear, man. Come on. No, well, Pastor, I was looking at it, and, and, and I want to go back and visit uh, 48 and 6. Um, fear took hold upon them there, and pain as, a, as of a woman in travail. And what I like, uh, and what I like about that part, Pastor, uh, is, is how the writer, uh, it brings back to mind the word of God for the men and women of God. Because as men, we don't know about the pain of a travail for women or when women are getting childbirth. We can hear it, but we don't know anything about it. So uh, to me, it's where the, uh, where, the writer or, uh, where the writer made it plain for both men and women. Because men and women both know about fear. But uh -huh. then we talk about, and we know about pain, but then we talk about depths of pain for where men don't understand. But, but all these mothers out here that had children, they will. So it just brings back the word of God for the men and women, for the people of God. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, and, and so uh, we, we get that, that the sense of the over, overwhelming power of God in the face of our enemies. But we've got to trust him in the midst of that. Because see what, see what it said, because here's where we're going to finish. In the city of the Lord Almighty, in the city of God, God makes her secure forever. Stop and think about that. Because what do we say? So biblically, the city of God is Jerusalem. Jerusalem. But spiritually, the city of God is within the city us. of the Lord Almighty is 
Uh, yes. And yeah. the, 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 the words on that last line, God makes her yes, secure. Sir. What's it mean to be secure? To be secure? Yeah. Uh, to be, uh, uh, some would say safe. Some safe. would say, uh -huh. uh, you could say safe. You could say uh, uh, comforted. You can say uh, uh, entrenched, right. or you without can just say fear. With, without fear, I like that. Yes. Um, the uh, the Bible.com, I mean, dictionary.com, sorry, says to be secure is to be fixed or fastened so as to not give way, become yes. loose, or be lost. Mm -hmm. Yes. We ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Now, Here's the interesting thing. In all of history, was Jerusalem ever destroyed? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Several times. Mm -hmm. yeah. building up the temple. But even in the midst of destruction, what does this verse say? Forever. Are you on eight? Yeah. Forever will it be established. God, it's established. It might suffer. There might be bad things because we know Jerusalem had bad things. Right. But it was still established. It was still secure. So again, coming back to us, it's not that bad things won't happen. It's not that we might not get attacked. It might. We might even get knocked down. What did I tell? We talked about last week. Got knocked down. Right, like a weeble wobble. But a weeble wobble. <laughs> Say it, Jackie. A weeble wobble. Brother, that's weeble, wobble. weeble wobbles. Boy, I tell you. <laughs> that's how you know you've been pastor in one place too long. When you got to go all the way to weeble wobble, you, you might need to move on. I don't know. But, uh, you know. Do you weeble wobble, but you, but you don't fall down. But huh? you don't fall down. That's right. So here. So here we go. God has established you. Yes. He has secured you. Mm -hmm. But you don't see what's going on. I, I see what's going on, but you need to know what's going on is not the end. What's going on? Because if it is the end, if you are being moved and, and thrown around, then this verse is a lie. And nobody was willing to say, well, you know, the word of God ain't true everywhere. Anybody, anybody want to say that? Anybody want to say the word of God ain't true everywhere? Because if it's not true everywhere, it probably is not true anywhere. That's right. We got to take it all. And I'm taking this verse to know that when they, when they attack, when the mess comes, when people gather together to attack, we are secure. We might suffer. We might struggle. But we're not going anywhere in the long run. Because remember, we're playing the long game here. And eternity, last I checked, is a mighty long time. And God has promised to always be with us in the midst of everything that is going on. And that's why, again, I think I love where these Selahs find themselves. Stop and think about that. Stop and think about the fact that you are secure. Stop and think about the fact that even though that they are attacking you, that God is going to be the one that's going to protect you. Because, because the God you have heard about, you're going to see. And in the midst of your prayer life, and we just talked about in Psalm 47, as we call him up, we call him up because we remind ourselves who he is, and that's what we are going to see. And so in the, we're, we're only going to get halfway through the psalm. I'm just so excited I got halfway through. Woo Praise the Lord. But stop and let, let's stop and think about what the psalmist told us to stop and think about in these two, in these two, book, in these two psalms. Think about how great our God is. And if our God is that great and he is in me, that makes me pretty great too. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Right. It's Because it's not about me. It's not about how smart we are. It's not about how cute we are. It's about the power of God in us. That we will be able, and, and I really believe when we look at, when, it, when the Bible talks about us fighting the devil and fighting the wild of the devil, it says all I need you to do is stand. Well, things mm -hmm. stand when they're secure. Mm -hmm. You know, you got a big windstorm. Hey, it stands, even though the wind's blowing, even though you got hail falling, you got rain, you got all this stuff going on, but it still stands. Why? Because it's secure. And yes, rain's going to come. Yes, mm -hmm. wind, fire, all of this stuff is going to happen. We're seeing it every day. 
but the confidence that God, I believe God is trying to give us this evening is that we are secure because God is in us. Mm. And that should cause us, go oh, clap your hands. That should cause us to celebrate, celebrate in victory because I don't care what you throw at me, you can't stop me. There was someone, uh, one of the, uh, Brother Wade, you might remember, I think it was uh, Stuart Scott, who used to say, you can't stop him, you can't even contain him. When he was talking about basketball players, let's talk about athletes, because it didn't matter what you did, you just couldn't stop him. We need to have that kind of confidence that they can't stop us because of the God who is in us. All right? Questions mm -hmm. or comments? Psalm 47, Psalm 48 uh, through verse 8. We'll pick up at verse 9 next week. Okay. Uh, Pastor. Yes, ma'am. We had said something about the Old Testament going into the New Testament. You remember that statement that you made? Here by my mama jacket. When? What Just was it? Earlier, uh, when you were saying uh, Psalm 47, uh, I was trying to write that down, what you were saying about what the Old Testament is and what the New Testament is. Yes. Um, mm. I don't know if it was Chronicles or something you quoted, Pastor. One of them. Oh, It'll come to you oh. later. Don't worry. I, I might have to watch the video. We might have to watch the replay. I will. I do I'm a, this. I'm a, yeah, I'm gonna post it on. I'll post it on YouTube. You can watch it on Facebook. Hopefully, you can see the replay because I I don't know what I said. It was good though. It was using you. It Whatever was good, it was, though. it was good though. It was it was good. <laughs> <laughs> he just talked. He just talked. Talk, talk. <laughs> it was good though. Seriously, I'm not. Thank it was. It Thank was. You. So, <laughs> hey, hey, in your prayer time. Yes. Call him up. Yes. Call him up. Yeah. Talk about your problem. Just be in there. Talk about your God. Be in there. All right. Yeah. And as we do that, as we do that, watch mm -hmm. God show up and show out in our Amen. lives. All right. Because that's what I'm looking for. Because, come on now, we, we all know we need God to show up and show out. Yes, we do. Amen. We, we need that. We need him too. But we right don't now. get that by just whining, telling him all about our problems. We get that by reminding him and reminding ourselves of who he is. Mm -hmm. He is a great and awesome God. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we're looking for him to show up. All right. Any Amen. questions or comments? Anybody else? Anything else? <laughs> all right. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, I made a mention of it earlier, uh, and um, we'll talk just just to make the announcement one more time. Um, five years ago tonight, uh, the uh, some of the members of Manual Amy Church were killed while they were at Bible study, um, and so um, across the Amy Church this week there will be uh, commemorations and things going on, and we will have our own virtual commemoration on Saturday at 6 p.m. I sent out an email; it's got the Zoom information. The Zoom information is also on Facebook, and um, but if you need it, just invite everybody to come out. And not only are we going to um, celebrate those that passed, but also look at those who survived. Um, because again, uh, today I imagine I, I could imagine is is a, is a tough day for mm -hmm. some of them. Not just yeah. those who, have, but, but those who who survived. That God spared wow. them for whatever for His reason. And yeah. um, and so we want to uh, commemorate uh, their still being here and also remember those that passed. So I invite you to come out and share with us. Um, and again, even was it, uh, say again. What was it a shooting? Yes, it ma'am. Yes, it ma'am. It was. I think and, I to remember that. Yeah. And so just want to uh, encourage us again not to wallow, but even in the midst of this, God is still God. Still, he was on the throne five years ago tonight. He's on the throne today. That's right. And we will celebrate that. All right. So Saturday, uh, the 20th at uh, what time? Is it 6, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, let's pray. Eternal God, you are wonderful. You are awesome. You are the king of kings. You are our healer, even though we're, we still hurt. You are our provider, even though our bank accounts are still empty. You are our comforter, even though we still feel some kind of way, because you are God. And Lord, we thank you for living in us. We thank you for walking with us. We thank you for being around us and sitting on the throne of the world and 
the throne of our lives. Lord, it's because of that, we face the world with confidence. Lord, forgive us for turning our backs when we've had all the protection we've needed inside of us. Lord God, give us the strength and courage to stand up in the face of injustice, to stand up in the face of fear, and stand up in the face of our enemies, not because we are so strong, but because the God who is with us is so strong. Lord God, for all those that are around us that are uh, uh, facing sickness and facing illness, Lord, we pray your healing power because we know you still have it. Lord God, for those who are looking for something, Lord, you are the God of wisdom, and I pray that you will give them direction. Lord God, for those that are lonely, I pray that you will join with them and be Emmanuel in their lives. Lord God, we celebrate you tonight because you are God all by yourself. And Lord God, because you are God, because you are reigning and ruling, we believe everything will work out for your good and your glory. Lord, we thank you in advance. We give you a shout of victory to say thank you for all that you are doing. And even until you do it, we're still going to praise you because you will still be God. We thank you. We praise you. We celebrate you for being who you are. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, everybody, for your time and attention. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. Hey, Sister Karen, what's going on? Haven't seen you in a while. Oh, nothing much. How you doing? I'm doing good. Hey, you good. missed you missed uh, 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 Sunday. You know what Sunday was? <laughs> mm, don't start. What? <laughs> you know what Sunday was? You be nice, I'd be nicer. <laughs> I'm just saying, you, you know what Sunday was? What was it? It's Flag Day. Who? Flag Day. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was Flag Day. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Sunday was Flag Day. Oh my gosh. Are you saying flag? Yeah, flag. you're saying flag. Right here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, I ain't going there. No, right there. Don't <laughs> worry. I, that was just for you, uh, Brother Sean, and, and, and Brother Smith, because we know that you are on the bad foot. And, Don't call my husband. On the bad foot. And the other bad foot is Pastor because uh, uh, he's a cowboy. Oh, yeah. So I just had to get that in there. <laughs> I haven't had a chance. I haven't had a chance to get to you for a minute. So had to. Okay. Uh huh. You're gonna hit yourself in the face with it. <laughs> <laughs> Laid out. We'll see. 